You can watch the best parts of this series at MedCircle.com. Hoarders. There are millions in the U.S. Research suggests as many as 14 million people may suffer from a hoarding disorder. But according to Dr. Jenny Yip, the majority of patients who have the right support system in place do recover. This series will teach you the signs of compulsive hoarding and the strategies to help your loved one who's showing these signs. Welcome to the MedCircle Premium Series, How to Help a Hoarder, The Signs and Strategies. Dr. Yip, welcome back to MedCircle. Thank you so much for having me back. Now you were made famous, maybe infamous, depending oh. on who watched it, when <laughs> you took off the bottom of your shoe and licked it. Okay, yes, that, that I can see how that could be. Uh, but you, I wasn't the first person to do it. There's been many before me. Yeah, and it wasn't the first time you did no, it either. No, yeah. no, 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 I do it almost too often. Too often. You are certainly an expert when it comes to the field of OCD. Mm -hmm. um, for people who are just getting to meet you for the first time, give them a little bit of your background. Well, I have treated obsessive compulsive disorder and OC related disorders such as hoarding mm -hmm. for almost two decades. I come from a family where there are several members who have OCD and also hoarding. So mm -hmm. I myself suffered from OCD since childhood mm -hmm. and I thought I had conquered it and then re-experienced it during my postpartum period. Mm -hmm. So um, this disorder is very near to me and um, my goal is to help your audience really understand what it is yeah. and what it's not yes. and to dispel a lot of the myths around it. Yeah, well here's my first question when it comes to hoarding. When we watch it on TV, it's always so dramatic and monumental. You walk into these homes and you cannot move and there are sometimes dead animals in there and you know it is not safe to live in and you can't breathe in there. Is that really what's going on in 14 million homes in America? Well, not all 14 million okay. homes in America. So those are the severe... Those are the really severe cases and it can get to that degree. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, without treatment, hoarding tends to have a chronic course. Mm -hmm. So can it eventually get to that place? Well, of course. It might not be there at this very moment. The person might have just three pets. Mm -hmm. You never know. Those three pets can easily turn into 20, yeah. 30, 50. Yeah. So then let's go into what life looks like for somebody who has hoarding disorder. A person who has hoarding disorder would have a hard time getting rid of their possessions. Mm. They would have um, intense attachments to those possessions. They would experience a lot of distress if they were to part from their items. Mm -hmm. They have a tendency to also accumulate items, so mm -hmm. they might be bringing things home that are free from, I don't know, your, your, uh, an, an event. They could be buying a lot of things when it's on sale just so that they can have it. And the accumulation gets to a point where places in the home is no longer used for what they're intended for. Mm. So this coffee table wouldn't be used for things such as these cups. Tubs aren't used for bathing. The stove isn't used for cooking because it is filled with stuff. Wow. And in your ex you've worked with people who have hoarding disorders. Yes, I have worked with people who hoard, yes. And have you been inside their homes? I have been inside every one of their homes, yes. And what kind of things have you seen? <laughs> At least she laughed. Oh my, <laughs> the things that I have seen, okay. Well, I mean, they can be things that we, all, we see in all of our homes. Newspapers, mail, books, papers. They can also be things that most of us wouldn't collect, such as food items, um, expired foods. Um, it could also include things like um, animals, as we just spoke about. So again, how easy it is to have three pets turn into ten, quite easy for a person who hoards. Uh, some of the more Another common item is clothes, right? We often have too many 
clothing and shoes and bags、mm. that we just don't have places for. So it could be common things. It could be things that are not as common. Have you ever found a, a dead animal in a house? I have. You have.、Uh, What、yeah. kind of animal? It was a cat, and by the time that the the person who hoarded had realized that the cat,、um, you know, it, it was deceased by that point, and it was already rotting. Wow. Right. So in the home. In the home. Yes. And well, it was in the backyard of the home.、Mm. Yes.、Um, what is the difference between someone who is a hoarder and someone who just has a lot of stuff, or someone who collects? Well, a person who hoards again, they have different. They they have a problem discarding items.、Mm -hmm. They have a problem with accumulating items, and then they also have a problem with. Figuring out where to place all of the items,、mm -hmm. so the house tends to be disorganized. There's really no category for where things are supposed to be placed,、mm -hmm. um, which is different than the person who has clutter. A person who has clutter, you might have too many things,、um, and you might get to cleaning the place up, except it's just. Cluttered right this moment. So if you can imagine, if you had just moved、mm -hmm. and you have things in random places, or it's it's a Friday night and you haven't cleaned your place for the entire week,、mm -hmm. that is what a clutter home would look like, versus a hoarder's home. I mean, there are just piles of papers and stuff and books and anything that the hoarder is collecting. Um, in random places,、yeah. it's all disorganized. Now, then, there's the collector who is actually collecting items of value to most people.、Mm -hmm. That's not to say that the hoarder isn't collecting items of value. It's just not of value to most people. Most people, right? So the collector might be collecting antiques,、mm -hmm. might be collecting rare books, might be collecting albums. And they're usually placed in organized categories, and they could even be displayed because it's something that you want to show off.、Mm -hmm. What was the worst hoarding situation that you've ever seen? I would say that at one point there was a woman who、uh, was collecting. I mean, she wasn't collecting; she had a lot of animals and. She really believed that she was, she was saving these、mm -hmm. animals. She、mm -hmm. was a rescuer,、mm -hmm. an animal rescuer.、Um, the problem is, she would end up adopting these animals if the, there was no placement for the animals. Right. So it got to the point where her whole home was filled with, I would say, almost fifty、uh, animals, and one person cannot.、Oh. Um, You know, cannot care for fifty animals. No way. So it got to the point where the house was just unsanitary.、Mm -hmm. It was a health risk.、Um, animal welfare had to be involved. And what made it one of the most challenging cases was the emotional intensity of it, because the person really believed that she was caring.、Yeah. For these animals, keeping them from being,、um, you know, put down.、Right. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. What was really happening was that the animals weren't being cared for properly. They weren't getting the nutrition or the food that they needed. A lot of them were starving of hunger, of thirst. They were dying, and she wouldn't know about it because there are just so many of、mm. them. Yeah, I, I can only imagine what that would be like for her, who is suffering from this this disorder.、Yeah. And I mean, no one loves animals more than me, and so I feel for those animals. Yeah. But in her her reality, she did not think those animals were being abused.、Gotcha. She did not think those animals were in a bad situation. So for somebody to come and remove those animals from her that she likely really loved,、mm -hmm. I mean, if someone took Callie away from me, the dog here.、Uh, I would be distraught and devastated, yes, of you know, because I wouldn't understand why my the love of my life would have to leave. Of course, you know. Of course.、Um, <clears throat> nearly fifteen percent, or about fifteen percent, of people 
who hoard recognize that there's an issue, 15%. You say you think that's a little high, because in your experience it's less. Well, I would say that most people who get into treatment don't get into treatment because they willingly mm -hmm. come to treatment. Right. Um, I would say that most of the time when we get calls at the Renewed Freedom Center, it is because family members are calling on their loved one's behalf, mm -hmm. trying to find help, trying to find solutions, because their family member not only isn't recognizing it's a problem, they're not willing to go into treatment, and they're quite defensive about it being a problem. Yeah. So 15% is actually seems a bit high in, in my experience. Yeah. But, but the, either way, that's still a very low number. Which leaves 85% of the people out there needing motivation to get into a screening process and to get into treatment. One thing that I loved in this series is that you gave viewers the tools they need to participate in what's called motivational interviewing, which is getting someone to see the reality of the situation and, and get them amped up about yes. improving their own life. And my favorite part of the series was our treatment episode yes. because Treatment can be a very gray area mm -hmm. because not one thing is going to work for everybody and all that. But you made the treatment for hoarding disorder very understandable, very simple to follow, and it gave me a lot of hope. I don't know anybody personally who has hoarding disorder, but with this devastating condition, you brought such a clear plan to place. And for me, that was just that was the game changer of the series. And so I want to give our viewers a sneak peek of that as well. Take a look at this clip from our treatment episode. So you help the person actually go through the process of solving regular everyday problems. And for a person who hoards, who has difficulty making decisions, it could be something as simple as, well, I have guests coming over. Um, what kind of hors d'oeuvres should I have, right? Or what kind of food, let's not even hors d'oeuvres, what kind of food should I have? So it could be something as simple as that. Well, let's think about all of the possible foods that you can think of. And out of these 10 different uh, options, which would be the easiest for you to implement? And you're saying you need to teach them how to do that as well? Yes. Wow. Yes, because again, part of sorting and sifting is to figure out what I'm going to keep, what I'm going to discard. So there's a, there's a fundamental problem here of just making decisions yes. with hoarders. So it's not about addressing their, just addressing accumulating all of this stuff and never discarding it. It's about how to teach them to make decisions in all aspects of their life. Initially, yes. Initially, okay, Yes. got it. And then once they get a handle of that, then we'll actually go through the sorting and sifting and God. discarding. Okay, this is so good. Even after the sorting and sifting and you know, after we separate the piles, there's the problem of, well, are you going to be able to part with your items? And how do we deal with the distress in parting with, with the items? So, you know, we have to do exposures to the discomfort of parting with your items. So purposely parting with your items and sitting with the discomfort, knowing that your discomfort will subside on its own. And out of the people that you've treated or that your facility has treated, what would you say the average recovery rate is? I would say that about 60 to 70 percent of patients who are highly motivated mm -hmm. and committed to treatment mm -hmm. um, will recover. Mm. Now again, your motivation is the most important determining factor mm -hmm. to treatment recovery. Mm -hmm. So the biggest part of treatment is motivating the person to recognize hoarding as a problem that doesn't fit with your value system, that doesn't right. fit with your meaning of life, right. and therefore is willing and motivated and committed to treatment. Yeah. And that is the biggest part of it. Yeah. You know, 
Understanding hoarding disorder and what goes into treating it requires an education, which you provided in this series. Mm -hmm. But what you also provided us is our series that we filmed on OCD, because while hoarding disorder is related to OCD, mm -hmm. it is not it is OCD. Not. And so when I actually was preparing for this interview, I watched our series on OCD oh. to make sure that I was understanding the difference. And we also talked in treatment about the importance of CBT, mm -hmm. which we have an entire series at medcircle.com, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, um, which I also watched in preparing for this interview. So for somebody who knows somebody who has hoarding disorder, they have this series, they have the OCD series to understand what it is not, and mm -hmm. they also have the CBD series, among mm -hmm. others, to really get a grasp of how to approach their loved one with hoarding disorder, get them into the right, right treatment mm -hmm. uh, plan so that they can be one of the 60 to 70% who recover. Right. That's yes. so exciting. Yes, well, again, the most important determining factor is your motivation. Yeah. If you're motivated, then this will work. Yeah. If you don't even recognize it as a problem, why would you even go into treatment to begin with or even right. entertain yeah. the possibility of treatment? So motivating the loved one to suffer is a huge part to treatment success. Yeah, well, I'm super motivated. I'm really excited. Our, our members are going to really find the value and benefit with this series. And so I thank you on their behalf, but I'm sure you'll be getting plenty of messages from them too. I'm Kyle Kittleson, and remember, whatever you're going through, you got this. Thanks for watching. Your next step is to go to medcircle.com and finish watching this series. There you can also access other series and get actionable advice and simple explanations. Continue your mental health journey at medcircle.com, and I'll see you there.